Father, we pray now a bloodline around this campus, around every, every parishioner, every person, God, who's here. God, we pray for the ones who want to be here. And Father, we pray that no hurt, no harm, no danger befalls us. And Father, we pray that you would then put your angels around this building, God, to protect us and keep us tonight. Father, it is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Will y'all clap your hands and just make some noise in the house? Woo! <laughs> I like that little noise. All right, <laughs> y'all can be seated. Uh, uh, again, thank y'all for being here. Y'all, I, I want to share this with you. I'm somewhat, Miss uh, Shonish brought this to me. And in the Longview Voice, I think this is a, uh, a high school newspaper. I think that's why I think I'm saying that, right, high school newspaper. We were featured in the high school newspaper, uh, Community Praise for the Safety Over School Districts. Amen? So, uh, so they took a picture, and I think, Miss Cindy, I think your picture's in there, Sister Hollis, and, and a couple other people uh, whose picture's in there. So it's so good to see that, so good to see that uh, uh, those efforts were acknowledged by the school paper. Now, um, this past Sunday, this past Sunday, I started a whole new teaching um, about better days are coming. That was a whole that was a whole sermon, and I just enjoyed it because I think that's the word that God has given to me for us. That better days are coming. Will you look at somebody and remind them that better days are coming? Just remind them better days are coming. So here's what I want y'all to do. So so, so the so the next time y'all make a tweet or you make a post, I want y'all I want you I want to hashtag everything. Hashtag better days are coming. So just hashtag everything. So those of you watching online, do it right now. Hashtag better days are coming because I I think in the season time that we living in right now, we need to encourage people and let people know that where we are is not where we're going to be forever um, because we don't want people to lose hope. We don't want them to lose heart. So hashtag better days are coming or just hashtag better days. Just know that better days are coming and God is and God is um, God hasn't left the throne. God is still working and he's still doing great and marvelous things in our lives. So tonight I want to I want to take some time. You guys have to be patient with me tonight because I have a lot of content, a lot of things I want to share. I pray that we can get to the end of it tonight. Um, but but there's a principle that I want to teach us tonight. I want to teach you guys that uh, something that we can that can help us through these trying times. I think that's what God is saying to me to say to you. He's saying, teach my people how to endure during these trying times. So we're, we're going to talk about that. So will you guys find Psalm 27? Go back to the 27th number of the book of Psalm. It's kind of where I preached on this past Sunday. We're going to revisit. And please, if you can take notes, take notes, write things down, um, take your phone out, take a picture of the screen, whatever you have to do. And I, I want you guys to take some time and go back and study over the teaching. Now, again, my job is to give you the word in seed form. I give you the word in what? Seed form. I give you the word in seed form. It's your job to take the seed of the word that I plant into the soil of your life. And it's your job to room it, to, to go and to, um, to, to groom that word or to plant it and to allow that and to, uh, uh, to fertilize it so that seed can grow up as a bountiful harvest in your life. Now. Uh, Psalm 27, I've been reading this for the past two weeks, if I encourage you guys to read it, but um, look at verse number 13 and 14, verse number 13 and 14, same passage that I taught from this past Sunday, Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14, let's read it aloud and together, whatever version of Bible you have, let's read it loud and together, uh, verse number 13, one, two, ready, read, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If, if you have a Bible, if you, if you take notes, I want you just to underline wait on the Lord. I, I want you just to write that on your notes. Just write that word, wait on the Lord. Those of you who are watching online, write that in your notes. So just write wait on the Lord. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the power to wait. Everybody say power to wait. Power. Say it again, power to wait. That's what I want to talk to you guys tonight about the power to wait. The power to wait. David is saying to us in Psalms 27, David is saying that this is a principle that we all need to operate in, but it's a principle that I think sometimes is misunderstood and sometimes it's even undertaught. Uh, we, don't, we don't teach people enough about waiting. Um, what, what we've um, what we've done in our efforts to encourage people, to make people feel good about Christianity and about prayer is, is we've kind of taught that when you pray, something's going to happen. That when you pray, God's going to do it. And, 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 and he is. We believe that. When you pray, God's going to make a way. When you pray, God's going to open up a door. And in saying that, we fail to tell you that there are times when you pray, 
that you're going to have to wait. <laughs> you're going to have to pray, <laughs> and there's some time you're going to have to wait. And so what happens is, is people become discouraged because they pray for a thing. Then uh, in their minds, it's supposed to happen right away. But then when it doesn't, then people become discouraged. And, and we've done a, we've done, we've done, we have to do a better job of teaching you that there are times in your life when you're going to pray. God's going to manifest that thing right away. And then there are times when you're going to pray when you, you're going. It's going to seem like God didn't hear anything you said. It's going to seem like God skipped over your email. It's going to seem like God deleted your text message. It's going to seem like God ignored, press ignore on your phone call. It's going to seem like that sometime in your life. But David is saying, David is saying, David is so convinced. Think about this. David is so convinced in his God that David said, if you wait on him, he's guaranteed to show up. If you wait on him, he's guaranteed to show up. Because if, if you read Psalms 27, if you read it, David talks about a lot of things that he's gone through, he's went through in his life. And David said, I would have given up. David said, I almost, I almost gave up. Raise your hand if you're in this room and you've had a situation in your life that almost caused you to give up. Raise your hand, you almost give up. Put your hand down. Well, raise your hand if you're married and you've almost gave up on your marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at <laughs> y'all. Y'all be ashamed of y'all. Uh, but, 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 but everybody has. My wife put her hand up. Lord Jesus, help us. Y'all pray for us. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so. But, but we all have, man, we all been in a situation, man, where we just wonder, is this thing real? Is, is what we're doing, is it, is it worth it? We've all been at that place. But David said, if, if you learn the principle of waiting, the principle of waiting helps you to endure trials and helps you to endure hardships. Now, here's, here's my task tonight. My task tonight is to teach you what it really means to wait. What, what is waiting really? We, we hear it over and over in Scripture, wait on the Lord, and there's so many Scriptures in the Bible. Matter of fact, I did, a, I did a, a, a word search on the word wait in the Bible. There's so many Scriptures. Man, that was, that was almost 100 Scriptures in the Bible that actually talks about waiting and waiting on the Lord. And so we, we've heard those things. And so I want to teach tonight about what it really means to wait. Now, um, the, the dictionary term or dis the dictionary definition of wait means to stay where one is or delay action until a particular time or until something else happens. So the way we the way we normally understand the word wait is to be still somewhere waiting on something to happen. That's why we understand it. We know what it means to wait. We know what it means to wait at a bus stop. We know what it means uh, to wait at the airport. We, we know what that means to sit and to wait. Now, the question is, is that the same wait that David is talking about? Is David saying for us to get somewhere, be still, and then just just wait on God to do the thing that God is going to do? Is that is that what he's is that what he's saying? So we're going to we're going to take some time and, and we're going to look at this and we're going to figure it out. Good. Now I want you to go over to Psalms 69. Go to the 69th number of the book of Psalms. I hope you brought your Bible tonight. If you didn't bring your Bible, take your electronic device out, whatever you have, and go to Psalm 69. I want to show you this. Psalm 69, look at Psalm 69, verse number, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Psalm 69, verse 1 through 3. When you have it, say amen. Okay, that was 13 of you. I will wait on the rest of you. Psalm 69, because I want you all to see this. All right, let's read, let's read verses 1 through 3 together. Psalm 69, verse 1 through 3 together. 1, 2, ready, read. Save me, O God. For the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I have come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for the Lord. Okay, now, listen to what this psalmist is saying. And maybe some of you guys can identify. The psalmist says, the first thing he says is, God, I feel like I'm dying. He says, save me. Why? What's the first thing that he says? Save me why? The water's where? <laughs> he said, the water's up to his neck. Now, <laughs> glory to God. If we said, he said, the waters are so high that they're up. In other words, I'm on my tippy toes just to stay alive. This is what the psalmist is saying, that the waters are up around my neck. Now, that's a bad situation. What, what if you were in your house and your house was flooded and the water in your house was up to your neck? Some, some, of you, some of you may feel like you're up to your neck in problems. 
You're up to your neck in situations. Maybe you're up to your neck in debt. You feel like you're up to your neck. The psalmist says, I feel like I'm up to my neck. And then what else did he say in verse number two? What else did he say in verse number two? I seek in what? I seek in what? Deep mire. Deep mire is like sinking in quicksand. It's like a, it's like a, um, um, a, a soggy marsh. It's like, uh, it's like wetland. I don't know if when I, we, I used to go hunting when I was a little boy, and we used to go out and we used to walk through these, through these um, uh, just really muddy and really soggy places that whenever you, put, whenever you step your foot down, you would sink almost knee deep. And it was very difficult to get your foot out. And every time you, you put your foot in, your boot would get stuck. And you pull up and your, your, foot come out of your, your foot come out of the boot. And this is what he's saying. He's saying, check it out. The psalmist says, I'm up to my neck in water. And I'm walking in deep mire. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, in, I'm up to my neck in water. And every time I try to put some pressure, I'm sinking deeper. This joker in a bad place, isn't he? He in a bad way. He says, I'm sinking deep in mire where there's no standing. He says, I've come into deep waters. And what's happening to the floods? He said, the floods are overflowing me. This dude is in a bad situation. He said, the flood is overflowing me. And then, and then verse number three. What does he say in verse number three? He says, I, he says I'm tired of crying. I, I, I listen, I've, I've cried, <laughs> I've cried, and I've cried. And he says, I'm, I'm tired of crying. I, I'm, I'm weary of crying. Then what else did he say? He said, my throat. <laughs> How much crying do you have to do to dry your throat out? He's cried so much. He says, my throat is dry. And he says, my eyes fail while I'm waiting on God. My eyes are failing me. I feel like I'm losing hope. I feel like, I feel like there's no energy. There's no life in me. I feel, like, I feel like I'm at the end of my rope. This is what the psalmist is saying. And so, now, now watch this. David is saying to him, or David is saying, even in this particular psalm, that there are times in your life when you're going to feel like giving up. There are times in your life when you're going to feel like throwing in a towel. There are times in 2020, man, when all these things start happening and all the people, you know, start getting sick and you start hearing people are dying. And after a while, man, if you you're not careful, you'll be like this guy in Psalm 69, and you'll be at a point where you'll say, God, this is too much for me. This is too much for me to handle. Now watch this. God never intended, God never intends for us to go through a year and to say that this is too much for me to handle. That's why David is suggesting that we need to learn how to wait on the Lord, because waiting on the Lord apparently is a principle that if we learn it, that it helps us to endure hardship. It helps us to get through difficult times. Because you have to know that it is God's desire for you to prosper and to be in health. But there are some principles that we've got to learn. Because we live in a microwave society. We live in a society now where, where, where you can just go online. You can go online, buy a car, and they'll bring it to your house and drop it off. You can go online and buy groceries, and you pull up, and they bring your groceries in the trunk, and you never have to get out. As a matter of fact, I sent an email last night. I was on the phone with a couple that was in Florida. I sent an email, and I said, look, I'm, I'm going to send this to you right quick. I sent it. The moment I clicked send, I heard them receive it on their end. And I said, you mean to tell me I can send an email from Texas to Florida in a moment? And we're so used to having things fast, having it quick. Now, the problem with that is, the problem with that is, God doesn't do everything fast. <laughs> so, so our society is conditioning us for speed, and God's trying to condition us for patience. So the, our society is working against what God is trying to manifest in our lives. But we, as people of God, we've got to be able to appreciate the speed while operating in patience at the same time. And so God's trying to teach us patience. So David said, David said that we've got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Here is the problem. Now go to Proverbs chapter 13. Go with me. Y'all got to roll with me tonight. Go to Proverbs chapter 13. And I want y'all to write these scriptures down. Don't just don't look at them. Write them down so you can go back and study them. Proverbs chapter 13, look at verse number 12. Proverbs 13 and 12, look at that real quick. Let's read it aloud together. Proverbs 13 and 12, when you find it, say amen. amen. Let's read it. One, two, ready to read. What does it say? Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it's true of life. Uh, the, 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 uh, the common English version of the Bible says when you don't get what you want, <laughs> 
your heart's overcharged. So, so here's the problem. Here's the problem. The, the, the issue with us is that when we don't get what we want, when we want it, we have a proclivity to be upset. Now, we learn that from, ch from children. Because if kids don't get what they want, when they want it, they become upset. But guess what? That same proclivity or that same inclination lives in all of us. That if we don't get it when we want to get it or we, when, we, when it doesn't happen though, in the time that we feel like it should happen, the Bible says that hope deferred makes our hearts sick. In other words, we become sad. And oftentimes we lose faith. Because it didn't show up the way we think, we, the way we thought it should. You prayed for a job, and you thought that job was yours. You went for the interview. I mean, you knocked it out the park. You knew you had that job, and then you got a, a thanks but no thanks letter. And now you're trying to figure out, like, wait a minute, I just knew that, you know, I, I just knew I had the job, or, or you went and applied for a loan, a home loan, or a car loan, and you just knew, and they come back and tell you, you need a co-signer. And you're like, oh, my God, you know, in your mind, you're thinking, like, wait a minute, I thought all this was okay. And, and if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we'll start to lose heart. We're starting to lose heart. Many people, unfortunately, in 2020, many Christians are losing heart in 2020, unfortunately. Thank God for you guys. Apparently, y'all still got it going on. Uh, but but, but the many believers are losing heart in 2020 because we have not learned the principle of waiting or the power to wait on God. Now, 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 can, can, can I just give you a grassroots definition of what waiting on the Lord means? Can I, just, can I just give you just a bottom line, basic, very simple, very, very simplistic definition of what waiting on the Lord? Can I give you that? Waiting on the Lord means going without answers to your prayer. Wow. Waiting on the Lord means going without answers. to. That's, that's really what's happening. You prayed about something, and the thing that you prayed about, you haven't received an answer for it yet. And hope deferred makes the heart sick. So because it's not manifested when you felt like it should manifest, then what happens is we sometimes stop believing for that. And here's what we say, well, maybe God didn't want me to have it. And we disconnect our faith from it. And the thing that you've been praying for doesn't show up because you disconnected your faith and you say, well, maybe that's not the thing that God has for me. And you back away from it. Now, realizing that God was hoping that you would keep waiting. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Could it be that the thing that you've been praying for simply haven't shown up because you haven't waited for it long enough? Now, we're going to talk about the purpose of waiting and why God, because God is not saying for you to wait just because he wants to know how long, how long you can last. That's not what God is doing. There's some other things, there's some other principles that we've got to learn about waiting. I, I, need, I need a, will, will you come help me? I, 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 need, I, need, I need a volunteer. All right. Miss, Miss Junisha is going to help me. Uh, Coach Junisha, teacher Junisha. Yeah, yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Okay, all right, so, so here's the goal. The goal, can everybody see that? Well, will you get up on stage? Get up there. Get up on stage so they can see you. Everybody, I want everybody to see you. The goal is to have the power to wait. What's the goal? What's the goal? To have the power to wait. That's the goal. Just stand right there. Thank you. The, the goal is to have the power to wait. That's the goal. That's what God desires for us to have. He wants us to have the power or the ability to wait. Even when our prayers aren't being answered in the time that we feel like they should, God still wants us. He still wants us to wait. Now, um, waiting on the Lord requires two key elements. Write this down. Requires two key elements. There are two key elements that you must have in order to be able to wait on the Lord. Number one, one is you must have a complete dependence on God. You have to have a complete and total dependence on God. If you are not totally dependent on God, it's going to be difficult for you to wait on him. You know why? Because, because you are depending on your, on your own circumstances. You are depending on your own power. You're depending on maybe what somebody said or what somebody else is going to do. But God wants to have the power to wait on him. But in order for that to happen, you've got to have a complete and total dependence on God. Number two, you must have a willingness to allow God to decide the terms. You don't get to pick the terms. 
You don't get to pick the timing. It's all in God's timing. Everything happens in God's timing. Glory to God. I, I, listen, you need to know that God's timing is perfect. You need to know that, that if, if you did things on your terms, you would jack your life up. If you got everything that you wanted when you felt like you wanted it, you would be spoiled rotten, and that thing would just move you further and further and further away from the will of God. But you, you got to be willing to allow God to decide the terms. Listen, look at your neighbor and say, God decides the terms, not you. God decides the terms. God decides the terms. Glory to God. And you got to be willing to allow God to decide the terms. It's his terms by his plans. You got to let God do it his way. God decides the terms and his timing and his plans. You got to let God do it. Now, now what I want you to do now, um, look up at the screen. You'll see it on the screen. Proverbs 1830. It'll be on the right. Jot that down. Proverbs 1830. It'll be up on the screen. Proverbs 1830. Look at the screen. Let's read it aloud and together. Let's read it loud and together. One, two, ready to read. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He's a shield to all who trust in him. Now watch this. Watch this. W waiting gives me a shield. Write that down. Waiting gives me a shield. God said he's a shield to all those who trust him. Because I, I can't wait on him unless I trust him. I can't wait on him unless I know that he's going to do the thing that he said he was going to do. If God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. We've got to believe that. Now, um, so God's timing is never early. Keep that in your mind. God's timing is never early, and he's never been late. You know, God has never been late for an appointment since he's been in existence. <laughs> God's never late to an appointment. God's always on time. Now, now listen, I need y'all to be honest with me. Be honest with me. How many of you can truly say that there's been some times in your life that you knew that God showed up right on time? You, you, you can say, I know there's been some times in my life where, listen, I thought it was going to happen one way, but I'm glad it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. But I thank God that he orchestrated it and the thing, the way he orchestrated it worked out in my favor. It worked out in the nick of time. I thank God. Listen, that, aren't, you, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that, that there was some, there was some, uh, some people you didn't date in high school? <laughs> when you go back home and see them now, you're like, oh, my God. Because many times, you, you ought to just thank God for his timing. God, God's timing is amazing. God's timing is impeccable. God is never, ever late. He's always on time. But God wants us to have the power to wait on him. Okay, all right. Now watch this. Our ability to wait on God is largely related to how much we trust him. It's largely related to how much you trust him. If, if you don't trust him, then you're not going to be waiting on him. You're not going to be waiting on him. If you don't trust him, you're not going to be waiting on him. <laughs> you, you, you can't wait on somebody you don't trust. Watch this. If, if, if you get dropped off at the train station, you don't call somebody that you know is not going to come. You want to call somebody dependable. Watch this. So, 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 so if you got dropped off at a, at a bus station, who would you call? Who would you call? You call your wife. Why would you call her? Because you know she's going to be there. Who would you call? Who would you call, Brother Rod? Who would you call? You call Scalfrice? You, you better say it that. She's sitting right there. Why, why would you call her? Why would you call her? Because she's going to come scoop you up. Who would you call? Your aunt. Why would you call your aunt? Because you know she's going to come. So watch this. So, so. If after you called her, after you called your aunt, would you sit and patiently wait? Why would you sit and patiently wait? Oh, y'all helping me preach. I hear y'all back there me preach. Because, because you are confident that because you called, you don't have to wonder. You don't have to wait. You, listen, all you have to do is just sit with your bags because you know that in a moment, after a little while, the person, they're not going to stop until they get to you. Glory to God. So you need to understand that same thing about prayer. Glory to God. You need to know that when you make a phone call to heaven and you talk to God, 
you got the same confidence that he has in her. See, he has in her that she has in her aunt. You got to know that that same confidence is alive and well in God. That when you call on him, he going to answer prayer, baby. He going to show up. Big mama said it may not come when you want him. But we got to have the power to wait. But our ability to wait, our ability to wait is directly connected to how much we trust him. To how much we trust him. To wait on the Lord, you need three things. Write this down. You need three things to wait on the Lord. Here's three things you need. Three things. Number one, you need a heart that's responsive to the word of God. You've got to have a heart that's responsive. You have to respond to the word. You have to have a heart that when, a, when your heart hears the word, that your heart responds to the word, that your heart's open to the word, that you want the word. You want the, you, you want, you not, you don't just want the good part of the word. You want the part of the word that rebukes you. You want the part of the word that, that corrects you. The, the part of the word that, that sets vision and sets guidance in your life. You, you, want, you want the meat of the word. You don't just want the milk of the word. You want the meat of the word. You're desiring more of the word. But in order, in order to learn the power to wait, you have to have a desire for the word. If you don't have a desire for the word, it's going to be impossible for you to wait on God. Because if, without the desire for the word, you really don't trust him like you, like, like, maybe, maybe like you're testifying. Big Mama said like this, you testifying upstairs. But you're living downstairs. <laughs> Glory to God. A heart response to the word, a focus on the things of heaven. You, 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 you have to have a heavenly mindset, knowing that we're not here to stay. We're not here to stay. Sometimes we get caught up in this world, but you didn't come here to stay. We're pilgrims, Pastor McClain, and we're passing through what, what they call this old barren land. <laughs> Glory to God. Because everything that we see is going to pass away. So you've got to be heavenly minded, knowing that we're going somewhere, knowing that we're not here to stay. Glory to God. You are seated right now in heavenly places, and you've got to know that. In order to wait on God, you've got to know that, you know what, God just told me to tarry till he comes. He told me to occupy till he comes. He just told me to preach the gospel till he comes. He just told me to try to save as many as I can till he comes. He told me to heal the sick until he comes. He told me to raise the dead until he comes. He told me to give until he comes. He told me to pray until he comes. Because after a while, God's going to show up. And he's going to show up because he's given me the power to wait on him. You have to have the power to wait. We have to have the power to wait. Now watch this. In order to wait, I need another volunteer. One, by, one of y'all babies come up here. Yeah, one of y'all. Yeah. Uh, in, in, order, in order to wait, run, 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 run. Just don't fall on camera. Take it up there. Take it up there. Take it up there. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Because, because in order to have this, oh, man, I got to have this. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. In order to have that. I got to have that. Oh, shucks. Okay. Y'all switch places. So, this is the goal. And I want to be able to wait. But I can't get to the place where I can wait until I get some patience. Woo, oh, Lord. Y'all better help. Y'all better pray for y'all pastor today. Because, because waiting on the Lord is an act of patience. Waiting on the Lord is how we, how we put patience to work. It is, it is how we show God that we trust him by operating in patience. Matter of fact, go to James chapter. Let me prove it to you. Go to James chapter 1. Go to James chapter 1. Y'all good? Y'all need some water? Y'all good? Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, let's look at this thing. I want y'all to see this. James chapter 1, look at verse 2. Look at verse 2 and 4. James chapter 1, verse 2. What does it say? Let's read it together. 1, 2, ready to read. My brethren, count it all joy when you do what? Fall into what? Various trials. Okay, what else? Knowing what? That the testing of what? That the testing of what? Testing of whose faith? The testing of whose faith? What does it do? It produces. It works. What does it produce? What is it working? 
What's working patience? Wait a minute. What's working? What's, what, what's producing the patience? Wait a minute. What's producing the patience? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need another, I need another volunteer. Come here. Give me another baby. You, one of y'all. Come up here. I need another volunteer. Oh, okay, so wait a minute. So wait a minute. Uh-oh. 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 Yeah, you up there. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. Okay. So this is what I want. I can't get this without that. So how do I get that? Oh, Lord. Y'all step, step down. Just go down. Okay. Now. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Okay, this is what I want. David said, wait on the Lord. There's a blessing in waiting. But in order to wait, I got to have some patience. That sounds good if that was all I needed. But patience is only produced one way. In order to get this, I've got to have this. I've got to go through some tests. I've got to go through some trials. I've got to have some heartaches. I've got to have some letdowns. I've got some people walk out of my life. I've got to have some people lie on me. I've got to have some church hurt. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I've got to go through some things in my life in order to get the patience. But this is the goal. The goal is the power to wait. And the power to wait, I've got to have patience. And patience, I've got to go through some tests and trials. So, if God is taking you through some tests and trials, James said, count it. Oh, joy. Why does James say count it? Oh, joy. Because the tests and the trials are producing patience. And you need patience to have the ability to get the power. So, y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here tonight. Oh, this is good to me. He said, I've got to go through some stuff. There's some things I've got to endure. That's why you're going through. That's why your faith is being tested. Because a faith that can't be tested is a faith that should not be trusted. That's why you're going through. That's why you're having all the hell going on in your life. Because God is trying to build something in you. God is trying to work something in you. It's almost like what you do before you make bread. You take the dough and you have to knead the dough. You have to squeeze it and work on it. You have to squish it because as you're trying to form it. You're trying to shape it. And you're trying to get to where you can mold it to be the bread that it's been called to be. So, so, uh, it's the goal. I can't get to the goal. Without patience, I can't get to patience lest I go through. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Now I understand why David went through the hell. I, glory to God. I understand it. Now I understand now why you went through the repossession. I understand now why you lost the first house. I understand now why the first relationship didn't work. I understand it now because I had to go through some trials and some testing and that developed some patience and the patience is leading me somewhere because patience reveals our faith in God's timing. Write that down. Our, our patience reveals my faith in God's timing. So, so I have to have patience. I have to be able to endure the hardship. I got to be able to endure it. Um, Psalms 123 verse number 2 you'll see it on the screen Psalms 123 verse number 2 says behold no no no, no. wait 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 wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, patience I, I told you that now wait a minute patience reveals our faith in God's time and I watch this I missed a step I missed a step I need another I need another volunteer another volunteer somebody anybody somebody somebody come come up here my man yeah my dude right there come up here get up on this stage get up on stage yeah go, go up there go up that step right there come on yes yeah, my dude right there yeah Make them a star. Okay. So, so tests and trials produce faith, patience, because the goal is the power 
to wait. But, but in order to operate in patience, there's something I need. Because without this, patience leaves. So now, I heard somebody say it. Now I need, hold that up, my man. Now I need faith. Hmm. Because now faith test trials patience. Huh. Y'all switch places. You two, y'all switch places. Okay. Now I've gone through some tests and trials. I've watched God bring me out. You've watched God make a way. You've watched God do it. You've watched God open doors. You've watched God shut the mouth of your enemy. You've watched God make your enemy your footstool. You've seen him do it. And, and because he's brought you through, do you know that? Do you know that every trial you've ever been through, God brought you through? Do you know that God has a 100% track record in your life? Listen, listen, that's why we called it going through. Watch this. We didn't call it going stop. <laughs> it's called going through. I heard somebody say it like this. When you're going through a storm, look at your neighbor and say, just don't stop. Just don't. Just don't stop. If you got a mask, don't say it loud. So now, my trial is producing faith. My faith then is how I operate in patience. Because without faith, I can't operate in patience. If she didn't have faith in her aunt, she couldn't sit there and wait on her. She wouldn't sit there and wait on her. Because she, she'll keep calling, keep calling, make sure she's woke. Make sure she, you, you up? You got your clothes on? Have you left the house yet? I'm not going to actually name that person. <laughs> all right, listen, 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 listen. Y'all good? Y'all need anything to drink? Y'all good? Okay, all right. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, uh, listen, listen to this, listen to this. So, so we have faith. Um, I, I wrote this definition. I, I, God, God gave me this as, we, as we're talking about waiting. Um, write this down. Waiting means doing something while anticipating something. Write that down. Right? Yeah, that was good. That was good. That's better than y'all give me credit for tonight. Yeah, I could charge for that one right there. <laughs> Waiting means doing something while anticipating something. Woo, glory to God. Because many people think that waiting means doing nothing. But the wait that, that David is talking about is not a doing nothing waiting. The waiting David is talking about is a doing something while anticipating something. That there'll be something that you're doing while you're anticipating the next thing to happen. Let me explain it like this. Let me explain it like this. Let's say that, let's say that your family was on their way to your house for the weekend. Your whole family is on their way to your house. For the week. It's already Wednesday. They're on their way to your house for the weekend. Here's the question. Now, you know some of y'all got some different kind of, yeah, different family. Yeah. All y'all family not in, not in church, praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Your family's on their way to your house for the weekend. Okay, here's my question. Here's my question. Tell me. I want to hear it. Tell me what are you doing. Wait a minute. You're doing what? So, so you're cleaning. You're cooking? You say hi in your jewelry? <laughs> cooking, cleaning, hiding the jewelry, shopping? What else? Preparing? What else? What are you doing? Putting on clothes? Getting the rules ready? <laughs> oh, you said the rooms or the rules? Getting the room, getting the rooms ready. <laughs> getting the rooms and the rules ready. Okay, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Here's the question. Here's the question. Are you waiting on them, yes or no? <laughs> you.
You're waiting, but you're doing something. Woo, this is good. Y'all ought to give me a raise. <laughs> you're waiting, but you're doing something while you're waiting. Do you know why you're doing something? Because you know that they're going to show up. After you know that there's a day, there's, there's a day coming that you're gonna hear horns blowing in your yard, you're gonna see headlights turn into your driveway. You know that them crazy jokers said they're coming. They didn't went live on the road. <laughs> they didn't stop that bucket. <laughs> so, so you know. They're on the way. But here's the question. What do we do when we know God is on the way? What, how do we wait on him when we know God? We know what to do when our family is on the way. But what do we do when God, we know God, is on the way. Can I suggest to you that the same thing you would do when your family is on the way should be the same thing. I'm preaching good tonight. I don't know what I drank. But the same thing that you do when you know your family is on the way should be the same thing that you do when you know God's on the way. Just like you would prepare your natural house to receive your family. Y'all better help me preach. In the same wise, you got to prepare your spiritual house to receive the God that's on his way. Woo, glory to God. That was good to me. Good to me. That was good to me. Listen, listen, listen. Behold, Psalms 120. Y'all good? Y'all need anything? Y'all good? Okay, y'all good? Okay, all right. Okay. Psalms 123 verse, y'all see it on the screen. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until he have mercy upon us. Here's what that means. That means that a servant is so in tune with the master that before the master acts for it, the servant is right there to give the master what he needs because the servant is in tune with his master. Glory to God. The servant, watch this, is waiting on the master. And God is saying that during our season of waiting, we are to be so in tune with God that the moment God says it, the moment God utters it, the moment God, the moment you feel God saying it, you're moving in that regard just because you're in tune with the master. You're in tune with him. You've got your life squared away. The word, the word wait in the Hebrew is the word sharath. Now, I'm going to give you two defin def different definitions. The word sharath, here's the first definition, which means to serve, to minister, to act in, in capacity of a servant or attendant. So the word sharath means to serve. So while we're waiting, we got to keep serving. While you're waiting, you got to keep giving. While you're waiting, you got to keep praying. While you're waiting, you got to keep coming to church. You got to keep doing the thing that you know God's called you to do. While you're waiting, you keep, you don't stop because you're waiting. You keep serving. You keep going. Glory to God. Now, now, so, all right, all right. So, waiting on the Lord does at least two things. Does at least two things. I need another volunteer. Another volunteer. Somebody run up here real quick. Come on. Yeah, you, come on. You good. Yeah. Yeah, go up there. Wait, wait on the Lord does at least two things. I want you all to see this. There's a reason why God wants us to wait on him. It's a reason. Two primary reasons. Arguably there are more, but two primary reasons why God wants us to wait on him. Two, argue, two, two reasons. Watch this. Watch this. Because waiting on God keeps us. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Waiting on God will keep you. Out of trouble. Go down to the end. Y'all shift. Shift to the right. Slide to the right. Waiting 
Scoot down a little bit more. A little more. A little more. Waiting on God keeps us out of trouble. It keeps you from walking outside of God's will. Do you remember Abraham and Sarah? God told Abraham, he says, he says, I'm going to give you. Matter of fact, go to Genesis chapter 15. Let me show it to you. Genesis chapter 15. Let me show, let me show it to you for yourself. Genesis chapter 15. Chapter 15. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 15. Look, look at verse number 4. Genesis 15, 4. Say amen when you found it. Genesis 15, 4. Amen. Y'all have it? Let's read it aloud and together. One, two, ready to read. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying what? This one shall what? Y'all ain't, ain't saying this one shall what? Y'all waiting. Y'all trying to cheat. Y'all looking at the screen. That's why it's not up there because I told you to bring y'all a Bible. <laughs> You're sitting there. Thank you. Yeah, y'all sitting there cheating. That's why it's so quiet. Y'all waiting on, yeah, waiting on Jerry. I depend on Jerry. That's one of y'all problems. Y'all waiting on Jerry instead of waiting on the Lord. <laughs> the Bible didn't say they that wait on Jerry. <laughs> Those of you who were obedient and brought your Bible, and you turned, you scrolled to Genesis chapter 15, Verse number four, will y'all be so kind to read it for those who are waiting on Jerry? And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying what? This shall not be your heir, but what? He shall come from what? Out of your own what? Out of your own body. In other words, in other words you and Sarah are going to have a baby. That's what he said. But guess what happened with Abraham and Sarah? They got tired. Waiting. <laughs> they got tired of waiting. So he's like, you know what? I got a maid servant. Go sleep with her. Let's go ahead and try to help God along. And now they messed around and got an Ish Ishmael was crazy. Ishmael was a crazy little boy. <laughs> Ishmael tore their house up, almost tore their family that tore their family up, almost tore his legacy up. Because, because, because waiting on the Lord to keep you. For all of you singles, hello, 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 hello. All of you who are single, <laughs> I heard my echo came back to me in the back. <laughs> Waiting on the Lord. It'll keep you. Out of trouble. We, we had a young lady in our church this weekend made a commitment to God that she was going to wait on the Lord because I believe she's going to do it. You know what's going to happen? It's going to keep her. <laughs> Out of a whole lot of trouble. Waiting on. So now you kind of understanding why God says that it's important for us to wait on him. Think about some of the crazy decisions. <laughs> Somebody said, don't go there, Pastor. Don't go there. But we, yeah, we still in recovery from some of them decisions. But think about the decisions that you made. That if you could go back right now and wait on the Lord, <laughs> some of the things that you did, you wouldn't have done if you had waited. Come here, purpose. There are some things that you haven't done yet that you don't have to do if you learn to wait right now. Maybe you didn't wait in the past, but you can start today. Say, this day forward, I'm going to wait. If God don't open the door, I'm not kicking one down myself. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? If God don't do the deal, then guess what? I'm not going to worry about it because I'm just going to wait on the Lord. I'm just going to wait on it. I'm not going to take a job that I know that's not in my plan, God's plan and purpose for my life just because I need an extra few extra dollars. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Now, let me, let me clarify something. Let me clarify something. Let me clarify something. Okay, okay. Now, now. 
Now, faith is not faith until God speaks. Waiting on the Lord doesn't mean that you have an idea and you're asking God to bless your idea. That's not waiting on the Lord. You're waiting on yourself. Waiting on the Lord is if there's something on your heart, taking the thing that's on your heart, surrendering it to God, asking God, God, is this what you want to bless? Once God says, yes, that's what I'm going to bless, then you patiently wait on the Lord. Many people are waiting on something that God hasn't sanctioned. You're waiting on things that God didn't ordain. You're waiting on things that God didn't say. You said it because you thought it would be a good deal, but you haven't taken it and surrendered that thing to prayer to see if that's the thing that God wants you to do. And many people, we move off emotions. And you do something because you got mad, or and you do something in haste, and, and then you do it after you're done, you look back and say, man, I really, I really shouldn't have done that because you didn't take the time and take that thing and give it to God in prayer. God said in Proverbs chapter 3, you guys know the story. He said, if you acknowledge me in all of you, he said, he said, God said, don't lean to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge me. He said, I, in other words, in all your ways, take whatever's on your heart. Because many of the things that on your heart, God gave you that desire. But, but when God gives you a desire that's in your heart, you take that desire and you lift it back up to God and say, God, this is what you want. I want a bigger house. I want a ranch. I want to be able to do some things. I want to be able to have family get together at my house. But you know what? I got to take it and live it. God, is this what you want for me? This is what, I, this is what I'm wanting. But God, I want to know, is this, is this what you're going to bless? Because if, if what I want is not what you want for me, then I don't want it. If what I want is not what you want for me, then God, keep it away from me. Because I want what you want. God, I want for me what you want for me. Glory to God. Because I know what you want for me is perfect. Glory to God. Okay, okay. It, it, it'll keep you out of trouble. It, one thing, God, one thing that'll do, it, it, it'll keep you. Power waiting. If you wait on God, wait on his timing, it'll keep you out of trouble. Watch this, watch this. The second thing, the final thing that we'll talk about tonight is the second thing, number one thing, so, so if, I, if I go through tests and trials, tests and trials producing faith, I've got faith now because I saw God bring me through some things. My faith now creates patience. Now I have the ability to wait. Now, now my patience, I, I produce, or my patience is proved by my ability to wait. Let me say it again. My patience is proved by my ability to wait. Now, because I'm waiting, I stay out of a whole lot of trouble. I don't make business deals without talking to God because you know what? I've got to wait on him. I don't make, I don't make alliances with people. I, I don't do that until I, because I have to wait on the Lord. I've got to see what God is saying about this. I don't get into, you don't jump into a relationship with people until you heard what the Lord said. God, is this, God, I like this person. They fine. They cute. They got money. They got this and that. But God, if that's not the turkey that you want in my life, because God, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on God, I'm waiting on you. Because waiting on God keeps you out of a lot of trouble. One last volunteer. Come on, come on. Come on. Uh, t- yeah, tell her, come on. Yeah, run up here. Come on up here. Yeah, come on. Yeah, one last one. Okay, okay. Two things. Go on, say. Go, go this way. Go this way. Go this way. Okay. Now, now, waiting on God does one or two things. Two, number one, it keeps us out of trouble. What's the last thing that it does? Guess. What's the last thing that waiting on God does? What, what does it do? Guess. What does it do? What? I heard gets results. What, what, what is it? The last thing it does. What? what? Huh? What? The last thing it does. Waiting on the Lord renews my strength. Huh. Oh, can I deal with this for just a Three more minutes. So, if, so, I'm going through all of this, through the test, testing of my faith produces patience. Patience gives me ability to wait on the Lord. 
if I learn how to wait on God's timing, it keeps me out of trouble. And watch this. <laughs> the more I stay out of trouble, the stronger I become. Because trouble steals your strength. <laughs> Y'all recording this? I need to go back and listen to this myself. <laughs> Waiting on the Lord ultimately renews your strength. Now, here's the question. Okay. Staying out of trouble gives me renewed strength. If, if you got to constantly go to court, that zaps your strength. If you got to constantly keep fighting the same battles. That zaps your strength. But this, because I've gone through all of this, produces this. Renewed strength. Isaiah 4, 31, y'all know it. But they that wait on the Lord. I heard it back there. I hear you, girl. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, listen to this. Don't miss this part. Here's the, here's the finale. <laughs> here's the big close. This is what I've been setting y'all up for all night. All night's been a setup. Yeah. What, everything I just said was the intro. Now I'm getting ready to preach. <laughs> okay, okay. The word wait... In the Hebrew, the second definition of the word wait is the word quava. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. The word, the word quava means to bind together. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The word wait means to bind together, perhaps by twisting. It means to collect, to expect, or to gather together, to look patiently, to tarry, to wait for, upon. Uh, but but it, means, it means to bind together by twisting. Wait a minute. Okay, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. So... I learned that I've got to be doing something while I'm waiting. But the word wait also means that there is a coming together. Hmm. There is a pulling together in my waiting. In my waiting, there is a coming together. C can I tell you what God is asking you to pull together? Can I ask you, can I tell you? Here's what God is saying. If, if, I'm going to say it like they said in the streets. You got to get your life together. In other words, you got to get your mind together while you're waiting. Glory to God. You got to deal with your thoughts while you're waiting. Glory. In other words, you've been entangled with some of the wrong stuff. But God is saying in this season of waiting, you've got to become entangled with the right stuff. You've got to get your mind together. You've got to get your soul together. You've got to get your heart together. You've got to get your life together. God is saying you've got to get it together. So why in this season of waiting in your life, you've got to pull some stuff together. Your mind can't be wondering in this season. Your mind can't be wishy-washy in this season. You got to be the hot or cold because when you're lukewarm, God said, I can't stand you. I'll spill you out of my mouth. So God said, you got to get it together in this season. You got to get it together. You got to get your life together. So while I'm waiting, what am I doing? While I'm waiting, I'm repenting. While I'm waiting. While I'm waiting, I'm laying out before God. While I'm waiting. While I'm waiting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back in his word while I'm waiting. I'm getting, I'm getting my life back together while I'm waiting. I'm getting my character back together while I'm waiting. I'm getting my integrity back together 
while I'm waiting. And when I come back together, you know what happens when I'm back in my word now like I'm supposed to? <laughs> when I've dealt with my sin nature like I'm supposed to? When I, when I shun the very appearance of evil like I'm supposed to? Do you know what happens when I can love my enemy like I'm supposed to? Glory to God. Glory to God. God said by, your, by mere virtue of you getting your life back together, you find a strength that is renewed. But you never get to this part without going through this part. We all put your hands together and bless the Lord. We all, we all give them a hand. God bless y'all. Hope y'all got a picture of that somewhere. Yeah, y'all can sit them down. Give them, give them to, to Coach Junisha. Listen, I'll share this last scripture. It'll be up on the screen. I'm already past time. John chapter 5, write this down. John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Study this in your time, in your own time. Yeah. <laughs> Antoine, I think it's what you mentioned to me earlier, wasn't it? Something like that. John, 1 John 5, 14 says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask, oh, Lord Jesus, that if we ask anything according to his will, you just know that he heard you the first time, that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have past tense. See, you've got to stop acting like you don't have it and act like you've got it before it manifests. you got to learn how to, ooh, I feel, listen, I feel a little preachy. But, but you've got to go ahead and start thanking God now for the thing that you know. If God already said yes to it, go ahead and start thanking him for it now. Thank him for the vision now. He said, though the vision tarry, y'all better help me preach. You better learn how to, somebody, look at them and say, you better learn how to wait. You better learn, glory to God. You better learn how to wait. Though the vision tarry, God said, wait on it. For at the appointed time, it shall speak and not lie. You better hear me in this house tonight. Glory to God. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait 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 on the Lord. Will y'all just praise him for about 15 seconds? Will you just praise him? If you believe God's going to do it, if you believe God's going to manifest it, if you believe God's going to turn the situation around, if you believe God's, come on, if you believe God's going to heal you, if you believe God's going to heal your family, come on, y'all better say it. If you believe God's going to save your family, if you believe God's going to open some doors for you, if you believe it, you better praise him now. Go ahead and praise God on layaway. Glory to God. Go ahead and praise him now for what he's going to do tomorrow. Praise him now for what he's going to do next month or next year. Go ahead and praise God right now. The power. The power. The power. Wait, I say. On the Lord. God hadn't forgotten about you. God hadn't forgotten about you. God hadn't left you. God's trying to give you the power. So we all sit down. God's trying to give you the power. The power to wait. They that wait. <laughs> Waiting means doing something while anticipating something. Glory to God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all better be talking about this. Y'all take, take your points and you better share this tonight. If you're watching online, you better share this. I don't know who this word was for, but it's for somebody in this house. God is saying, wait, let's pray. Y'all feel the presence of God. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. and God, we thank you for always manifesting yourself. Whenever your word is being taught, there's power in the room when your word is being taught. Thank you for your powerful word. 
Father, you said in Isaiah 55, 11, that so shall your word be that goes forth out of your mouth. It shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which you please, and it will prosper in the thing whereto you sent it. Thank you tonight for sending your word. God, your word hit its mark tonight. God, we thank you, Lord God, that every ear that heard your voice tonight, Lord God, God, they received exactly what you sent for them to receive tonight, Lord God. Father, we thank you now. Now, God, help us to hide that word in our heart. God, help us remember this word tonight that we might not sin against you. Father, we thank you tonight, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now look at three people confidently and tell them better days are coming. Just tell them better days. Oh, that's one person. Don't just point, look at them in the eye. Wait, wait till you make eye contact and tell them better days. Better days are coming. Better days are coming. Better days are coming. We're going to wait. We're going to wait on because God's timing is perfect. You know when the pandemic is going to be gone? In God's timing. In God's timing, it's going to be gone in his timing, not a moment before, not a moment after. It's going to be gone in, in, in God's timing, it's going to be gone. So you know what we do? We just keep serving while we wait. Glory to God. Wait, waiting is supposed to be a joyous thing. Waiting on God is supposed to be a thing that, that we as believers, we get excited about waiting because we know that God is coming. Just like you get excited about your family. You know they're coming. You get excited about them coming. We get excited about what God is going to do. We know God's going to make a way. We get excited when we wait. Glory to God. Y'all, y'all get a church some money. Yeah. 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 Don't wait. Yeah. Yeah, don't wait. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God.